there and welcome to another Satan Brain Hub video. My name is Emma and today we'll be talking about trigeminal neuralgia. We will do a brief recap of the relevant anatomy, there are other Satan Brain Hubs going through this anatomy in more detail, and then cover causes, signs, symptoms and treatment of the condition. The trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve and is the largest and most complex. It is responsible for detecting sensory stimuli that arise from the craniofacial area, along with controlling the muscles of mastication and containing proprioceptive fibres. Proprioception is the sense that lets us perceive the location, movement and action of parts of the body. We will begin with a brief overview of trigeminal nerve anatomy. The trigeminal nerve is divided into three branches, ophthalmic V1, maxillary V2, and mandibula V3. Their cell bodies are located in the trigeminal ganglia and they make connections with second order neurons in the trigeminal brainstem sensory nuclear complex. Ascending projections via the trigeminal thalamic tract transmit information to the thalamus and other brain regions responsible for interpreting sensory information. We have separate videos on this that will be linked at the end of the video, so go check them out. The ophthalmic nerve carries sensory information from the upper part of the face, including the scalp, forehead, nose and eyelid. The maxillary nerve carries sensory information from the middle area of the face, including the lower eyelid and cheek, the palate and part of the meninges. The mandibular nerve is both sensory and motor, controlling the muscles of mastication, namely the temporalis and master. It carries sensory information from the lower part of the face including the lower lip, lower teeth, gums, the chin and jaw. Trigeminal neuralgia is one of the most common forms of facial pain. It is characterized by a sudden explosive unilateral pain that is separated by pain-free intervals. 60% of cases are women and the average age of onset is 53 to 57 years. Risk factors include increased age, stroke, hypertension in women, Charcot-Marie tooth disease, and tumours in the trigeminal nerve region. The pain triggers are characterised as innocuous and mostly mechanical, with the most common including light touch, talking, chewing, toothbrushing and washing of the face. Trigger zones may be intra or extra oral and include nasolabial area, upper and lower lip, chin and cheek. Spontaneous pain is also common. During attacks, patients may wince or make head movements as if trying to escape the pain. The number of attacks may vary from less than one daily to hundreds per day. Causes of trigeminal neuralgia may be split into primary, idiopathic or classic, and secondary. Primary is characterized by unknown causes, but associated with compression of the trigeminal nerve root, possibly due to demyelination and subsequent hyperexcitability of the neurons. Secondary trigeminal neuralgia is caused by other pathological characteristics, such as tumours, multiple sclerosis or physical damage to the nerve. Trigeminal neuralgia is a clinical diagnosis, based on patient history and clinical examination. MRIs are used to differentiate between, between classical or secondary neuralgia and to track neuroanatomical changes to the trigeminal nerve. The International Headache Society has published strict criteria for diagnosis. A. Paroxysmal attacks of pain lasting from a fraction of a second to two minutes, affecting one or more divisions of the trigeminal nerve and fulfilling criteria B and C. B. Pain has at least one of the following characteristics. 1. Intense, sharp, superficial or stabbing. Or 2. Precipitated from trigger areas or by trigger factors. C. Attacks stereotyped in the individual patient. D. No clinically evident neurologic deficit. And E. Not attributed to another disorder. Medical, surgical and physiotherapy management is available for trigeminal neuralgia. Medical management includes anti-epileptic drugs with carbamazepine tending to be first line, muscle relaxants, tricyclic antidepressants or botulinum toxin injections. Around a quarter of patients will have surgery at some point, especially as pain duration and intensity tends to increase over the years, decreasing the effectiveness of drug therapy. 
The most common surgical procedures are microvascular decompression and glycerol injection, or radiofrequency thermorhizotomy, although others are also available. Microvascular decompression involves exposing the trigeminal nerve root and placing a cushion between the nerve and the blood vessel that may be compressing the nerve. Rhizotomy involves creating selective nerve damage that disrupts the body's ability to send the pain signals from the nerve to the brain. The pain suppression lasts one to two years and can be performed multiple times. Physiotherapy management may also be used. This may use a variety of techniques including electrical stimulation, interferential therapy and ultrasound. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.